Hypersonic missiles, or weapons that travel faster than Mach 5, have been widely described as impossible to stop. But as is so often the case when a new defense technology becomes a headline-grabbing buzzword, there's as much disinformation, misinformation, and general confusion out there about hypersonics as there is good, reliable info to pull from. So in this week's Crash Course, let's dive into the basics of modern hypersonic weapons, what they really are, and what their real implications are for defense. Before we can make any real headway discussing modern hypersonic weapons, we've got to run through some definitions first, starting with the word hypersonic itself. Traditionally speaking, hypersonic is a word we'd use to describe objects traveling fast enough to affect the basic chemistry of the air that they interact with, and that tends to start happening at right around Mach 5 or around 3,838 or so miles per hour, depending on altitude. But that's the twist. Being a modern hypersonic missile requires a great deal more than just speed. Germany's V-2 rocket of World War II fame was more than just the world's first ballistic missile. It was, technically speaking, the world's first hypersonic weapon as well. It would travel at speeds in excess of Mach 4 during its powered ascent, and in excess of Mach 5, or at hypersonic speeds, during its unpowered descent. And since then, pretty much all ballistic missiles to enter service, including all of the nuclear-armed intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs in service around the world, have all been hypersonic in nature. So when we talk about modern hypersonic missiles, we're talking about much more than speed alone. In fact, there are lots of integrated air defense systems all around the world that are more than capable of intercepting inbound ballistic missile warheads traveling at speeds as high as Mach 23 or better. What separates modern hypersonic missiles from these high-speed weapons is the ability to maneuver while traveling at those high speeds. And that makes all the difference. Modern air defense systems work by assessing the trajectory of an inbound weapon and predicting the rest of its flight path. They then launch an interceptor, a missile of their own, at a point further along that predicted flight path so that they'll collide when they both reach that point. Sort of like leading a receiver when you throw a football. But modern hypersonic weapons change course along the way, rendering those calculations moot and making it all but impossible to lob an interceptor further along the flight path to collide with it along a predicted route. And as a result, modern hypersonic weapons are considered all but indefensible using modern or existing air defense systems. Now, modern hypersonic weapons achieve this in one of two ways, and as such, they come in one of two categories. The first are hypersonic glide vehicles, sometimes called boost glide vehicles, and these are the only kind of modern hypersonic weapons in service anywhere around the world to date. They can be thought of as an extension of ballistic missile technology. They're carried aloft by a conventional rocket, just like a ballistic missile, but separate at a slightly lower altitude before gliding unpowered down toward their target at extremely high speeds, often higher than Mach 20. But so far, all that's just like a ballistic missile warhead. It's during that final stage of the descent, however, that these hypersonic glide vehicles maneuver, using either control surfaces or thrusters to change course along the way to make them far harder to shoot down. And as a result, they may actually reach a target slower than a conventional ballistic missile would, but there's a much better chance that they'll get there without being intercepted. The other type of modern hypersonic weapon are hypersonic cruise missiles, or HCMs, and they usually rely on exotic propulsion systems like supersonic combustion ramjets, also called scramjets. Now, these weapons can be thought of as high-speed suicide drones. Rather than flying along an arcing ballistic flight path like glide vehicles do, they're powered through the entirety of their flight and often at a much lower altitude along a more horizontal trajectory. They're just like regular cruise missiles, but at much higher speeds. Now, these weapons are also very difficult to intercept because of their high speed in conjunction with their maneuverability, but they're much 
slower than hypersonic glide vehicles, usually more like Mach 5 to Mach 10 at best. But these weapons are able to hide behind the curvature of the Earth as well as terrain to make them even more difficult to detect and even more difficult to intercept. Modern hypersonic weapons, like hypersonic glide vehicles and hypersonic cruise missiles, pose unique challenges for air defense systems because they make their intercept calculations more or less useless. But there are a number of efforts underway to offset this advantage in hypersonic weapons. But the biggest shortcoming hypersonic weapons face is their cost. Some cost more than an F-35A per weapon, and as a result, there are very few feasible use cases for such a high-priced missile. China using them to sink an American aircraft carrier would make perfect sense, but using them just to deliver a warhead to take out a command and control station or a tank or something like that really doesn't make any sense at all. The truth is, modern hypersonic weapons really do pose a massive and unique challenge to the air defense enterprise, but the huge costs associated with these weapons sort of relegate them to the strategic deterrent role, at least until they can become more cost effective. And with huge amounts of money already being invested into the hypersonic missile defense enterprise, these weapons may ultimately not prove to be the magic bullet that they're so often characterized as in media and popular discussion. But who knows what the future may hold. But in the meantime, I'll leave you with this warning. I would always take a critical eye when looking at the game-changing hypersonic claims made by any nation or company. They may really just be pulling from Werner Von Braun's World War II bag of tricks and hoping that you don't notice. I'm looking at you, Kinzel. And that seems like as good a place as any to close on this crash course. If you like this unscripted approach to diving into complex defense topics, let me know in the comments below and tell me what you want me to dive into next. And of course, please do me a favor and click subscribe. It really does make a huge difference. Thanks.